news from the ACTV studios in the entertainment capital of the world to your home and anywhere on your device. Visit actvus.com to enjoy live streaming of ACTV's programs, especially PLAM News, anytime and anywhere in the world. You can also download ACTV app from your smartphone, Roku, and Kodi devices. Also available on WCTV app, Facebook, and YouTube and search for PILAM News. Here are this week's stories. Two resolutions sponsored by Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn G. Goodman, approved by U.S. Conference of Mayors. And on our Global Pinoy, featuring Nina Porciuncula, anchor, reporter, Action News 13. An interview with Sam Peters, candidate for Congress, Nevada District 4. Two resolutions sponsored by Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn G. Goodman, approved by the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Resolutions address risk of transporting nuclear waste across the country and cyber attacks on government IT infrastructure. This two resolution is sponsored by Goodman were approved by the U.S. Conference of Mayors at the group's 87th annual meeting in Honolulu, Hawaii. The first resolution requires that the U.S. Department of Energy focus on the safe treatment and storage of radioactive waste on site where appropriate to mitigate health and environmental risks of transporting low, high, and mixed level waste to off-site treatment facilities. Mayor Goodman is a stout opponent of the storage of nuclear waste at Yucca Mountain and has long been against the transport of deadly and dangerous cargo to our nation's cities and towns on crumbling infrastructure. To view this and other energy resolution in full, visit the USCM website. Mayor Goodman also co-sponsored a resolution with the Baltimore Mayor Bernard C. Jack Young regarding ransomware attacks in the wake of governments being targeted in the cyber attacks for ransom. The USCM now has resolved that it stands united against paying ransoms in the event of an IT security breach. To view this and other criminal and social justice resolution in full, visit the USCM website. The United States Conference of Mayors is united in working toward resolutions to the challenges that our country is facing, said Mayor Goodman, chair of the USCM Business Council. The USCM is the official nonpartisan organization of cities with populations of 30,000 or more. There are 1,408 such cities in the country today. Each city is represented in the conference by its chief elected official, the mayor. Budget Dental Clinic located at 6376 Spring Mountain Road, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89146 with a telephone number of 702-220-8488 with Dr. G. Catter, General and Cosmetic Dentistry. 
budget dental. Dr. Cutter and her staff provide fantastic dental care. Budget Dental! And on our Global Pinoy, featuring Nina Porciuncula, anchor, reporter, Action News 13. Nina anchors the weekend morning newscast on the weekdays. She can be seen reporting throughout the day on their newscast and fill in as a traffic anchor. She joined 13 Action News as multimedia journalist in October 2017. Nina is from the Philippines. Needless to say, she loves never-ending sunshine, warm temperatures, and could not be more excited to call Las Vegas her new home. Before moving to the desert, she spent two years in Rochester, New York, reporting for W. HEC. During her stay in the upstate New York, she covered a wide range of stories from snowstorms to the Lake Ontario flooding to the dwarfed ISIS NYE attack in 2015. Nina is a proud graduate of the University of the Philippines, where she got her bachelor's degree in broadcast communication. She graduated in May 2014 and soon after moved to the U.S. to be with her family. Please welcome Nina Porciuncula. And of course, welcome to our guest here, Nina Porciuncula. Hello, Thank Nina. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much for coming. I know you yeah. just arrived from your <laughs> morning news. Yes, the early morning shift, 5, 6, and 8 a.m. every Saturday and Sunday. And I know a lot of Filipino community are following your news. And Nina, how did you get started with this news? Yeah, so it's actually pretty interesting. So for my background, you did talk about it. I actually graduated from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, with a broadcast degree, uh, broadcast communication. And so when I moved here, officially settled down in the U.S., I had some struggles because, you know, Tagalog was a language where we usually practice journalism yes. back at home. And I didn't have a tape to show for, for my audition yes, yes, and yes. for all the screenings. So I had to start from the ground up. At first, I took a part-time job as a broadcast traffic assistant. That is it's in New York, right? This was when I was in Tampa, yes. Florida mm -hmm. with my family. And it so I would work part-time and then a couple months later, I was using the money that I was earning from that part-time job to fund my internship. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so I had to buy a car using that money for the first time. I had to learn how to drive. I used that car to get to my internship. So I was working, uh, plus I had my internship as well, doing it all at the same day. And then I did volunteer work as well for a community radio station because I really wanted to become a news reporter. And I knew they were so welcoming, so I did that. So I had my internship, I had my volunteer work as a reporter, I also had my part-time job, plus I took on another job from working from Saturdays and Sundays as a receptionist at a hair salon. <laughs> <laughs> so just trying to make ends meet, try to earn enough money, because I knew I was eventually going to move out of my parents' home. And so when I finally had enough tape from my internship, I started applying and somebody from Rochester, New York, one of the news directors there looked at my tape, liked my resume and said, hey, come on down. Yeah, that's great. And technically, you're just new in the country, mm -hmm. but your transformation was so amazing, Thank you. especially the, the facility of English language. How did you do that? I, you know, I do not have a great answer for that. I feel like it just came naturally. Naturally. Yes, and although I would say my education, especially at University of the Philippines, yes. helped out a lot uh -huh. as well. And it did help that for a few years, I was going back and forth between the U.S. and the Philippines. So in terms of getting culture shock, that was not much of an issue here. 
So that did help out a lot for me. And one of the things that also helped me out was when I was studying in college, and I did not realize it back then when I was doing my broadcast journalism class, they prepared us to be self-sufficient journalists where we have to shoot, write, and edit everything, which, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's uh, something that journalists do in the Philippines. I don't think they go out and shoot their own stories and edit it. It's still a two to three man crew. Here in the US though, that's a big difference. I have had my experience of going out, shooting my own story, coming yes. back and editing it. And I didn't know it then, but UP <laughs> prepared me for that. And so that did help out a lot. So your experience also to be out, except yeah. uh, aside from being in the news, you have to do also your own research yes. and target for your target audience, right? Yeah, and I think one of the things that people don't usually know about reporters, especially for local news, is we pretty much do everything. Nothing is handed to us. We look for the stories, we look for people to talk to, everything most of the time is done in an eight hours or less. You come in, you get assigned a story, you, or you pitch a story and they let you do it and you have about five hours, put everything together and then you go on air. So, if you're lucky, <laughs> that is, if you have time to work on it. So how it's look like working with, you know, mainstream uh, journalists or uh, anchors on 13, uh, Action 13 News, right? Yeah, 13 Action News, yeah. Yes. So it is great, especially because we do have a broad range of talents who, mm -hmm. some people who have been in the business for so long that they've seen how the industry has transformed from tape to now digital editing and how also the the way we present news has changed throughout the years. If, I think if you look back to clips from 10, 20 years back, the yes. news is presented differently than it is now. And we do have also digital platforms that we are focusing on, which is where we're gonna have this video as well. We have it online so people around the world can see news happening in Las Vegas. So what is the usual day for Nina Porchukala? It depends on what my role is. So I think for our regular viewers who are familiar with my work, I pretty much have done different things. I anchor the weekend morning shows, obviously. So that means waking up really early, two o'clock, one o'clock in the morning on Saturdays and Sundays. And that involves me days ahead looking for guests that I have to bring in for live interviews. And for a reporter, when I have my reporter hat on, that involves me looking for stories that I want to do for that day, reaching out to my contacts, see if that story is gonna happen, or that means sometimes you're gonna get thrown into breaking news. If something happens, you have to drop everything, go there and make sure you are ready to go live. Sometimes you don't even have time to think about what you're gonna talk about. Sometimes they just send me there when you need you live in like <laughs> two minutes to get ready. And sometimes I do traffic, I still fill in for traffic, which is a completely different skill set. It involves me being in the green screen and being uh -huh. able to make my own graphics, uh -huh. knowing where the crashes are at, yeah. keeping track of where uh, all the closures are, knowing where the construction is happening and yes, letting all uh -huh. the viewers know. Did you experience also to be on the helicopter coverage? Not yet. That's one thing that I am working on. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully soon. I knew, well, I know it is in the book. So hopefully we get that done by August. Wow, that's great. You know what, Nina? What is your advice for the future broadcaster who wants to work as a TV journalist? Yeah. My biggest advice for anybody who is looking to break into TV news is Listen, it is not an easy field. Everybody thinks, well, a lot of people think it is a glamorous job. It is not. <laughs> it, is, it just looks like it, but there's a lot of hard work that goes into it, goes into the background, and I knew that going in. And so that's why having the right mindset and knowing that you do have to work hard to get to where you need to be is one of the things that you need to keep in mind to achieve your dreams and there's gonna be roadblocks along the way, and that's just how it is. 
And it's important as well to, I just, this is just my general philosophy as a person, it's important, it's important to be nice to people around you. Because I think when I was starting, especially when I was an intern, I just tried to be nice and smile with people. And the people who were working with me, as even though I was just an intern, actually went out of their way to help me out, to make sure I have a take, to make sure I have you know, something to show for, for my future employers. And I think it goes a really, really long way just to be That nice. was great, Nina. Yeah. Now, try to talk to, especially to our Filipino community. Yeah. So, okay, so I will do Tagalog, yes. Hi, everybody. So, magtatagalog na ako. I'm actually from Bulacan. So, medyo matatas pa yung Tagalog natin. Salamat po sa lahat ng mga sa lahat ng Filipino na nanonood sa amin sa 13 Action News and of course sa lahat po ng mga titos and titas sa ates at nakuyas na lumalapit sa akin kapag nakita niyo ako sa labas, kumakain, nasa seafood city, <laughs> kapag nagsha-shopping. Uh, sa Goldilocks. Yes, Goldilocks. Nakakataba po ng puso na kapag lumalapit kayo sa akin, sinasabi niyo na, hi, nanonood kami ng Channel 13, lagi kaming, ano, lagi ka namin nakikita. And nakakatawa lang kasi lagi lang tinatanong, oy ano, Filipino ka ba? O po, full-blooded Filipino po. <laughs> Walang halos. And, and uh, purong Pilipina, Bulakenya. So uh, hopefully, I am making you proud. <laughs> I try. Of course, we're very proud of Nina for <laughs> Thank you. Once again, Nina, thank you very much, yeah, thank you so for, much for coming. Me. I know you have very hectic schedule, but uh, you're here. Thank you very yes, much. Thank I always you. have time for my Filipino folks. <laughs> thank you. Uh, once again, this talk mic for Film News. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. On our featured local candidate, please meet Sam Peters running for Congress for District 4 of Nevada. Sam is the owner of Peters Family Insurance, a very successful risk management firm with two storefronts in the greater Las Vegas. Prior to settling in Las Vegas and exercising his entrepreneurial spirit, Sam spent two years as a corporate employee where he managed nearly 100 million in annual revenue across the largest geographical region in the United States. Sam retired as a major from the United States Air Force in 2013 after spending time in Afghanistan, Iraq, Panama, Korea and various installation in the United States. Over a career that spanned more than 20 years, he earned a bronze star for his effort in Afghanistan and was consistently recognized as a number one among his highly efficient and competent peer. Please welcome Sam Peters. Hello, Thank Sam. You. Hello, it's nice to see you. Thank you very much yeah. for, for coming here at Film News. Okay, Sam, can you please tell our viewers, why are you running for Congress? Absolutely. So I've been in the military. I've spent 20 years in the military, uh, as you noted in my biography. Um, in that time, I learned a lot of, uh, of how to protect our country and what our country stands for. And I've been out of the military now for six years, and I've really uh, realized that Somebody needs to start fighting a little harder, and okay. I have the experience and the and the and the drive to do it. And getting up in the morning, I look at myself in the mirror and I think, I got to do this. Of so, course. Yeah, you I love a, I love our country. Yes, of course. You have a great biography. Now, with regards with the different issues, yeah. What are your stands, especially on the issue of uh, uh, budget, taxation, immigration? Mm -hmm. What's your first priority there? So I hit on taxation first. I've actually signed the t the no new taxes pledge um, with the uh, 
um, Americans for tax reform. Uh, so I would, m my stance on taxes is no new taxes currently. We have got to get the budget under control. And you ask back to the first question, why am I running for Congress? I have a master's degree in administration with finance in there. Uh, the Constitution of the United States says all things budget and finance reside in Congress. They are doing an, an, just an abhorrent job on balancing the budget. $22 trillion in debt and getting worse by the day. Oh, great. How about the issues on uh, abortion? Abortion is a, is a very significant hot spot with individual rights. On a federal level, um, Roe versus Wade is the law of the land. And Roe versus Wade, a lot of folks don't understand, Roe versus Wade was, was, an, was an issue of states' rights, not individual rights. Um, I, I, I would never tell anybody that I'm either pro-life or pro-choice because they're, I believe it's a very circumstantial issue. And if you use either one of those words, you automatically ostracize yourself from the rest. And I think it's a much bigger issue than that. One of the biggest issues right now, the heated issue, is about the immigration. What's your stand on the immigration issue? I think the, the laws of the United States as a sovereign nation need to be enforced. Uh, there isn't, in my understanding of, of protecting sovereign nations and, and countries, we are one of the weakest countries in the world when it comes to protecting our own borders. We do a really good job in the military protecting our sovereign land, but the, the, the southern border obviously is the one we're referring to right now. Um, over 800,000 people have come over the border this year illegally. The United States cannot sustain that. So I'm a, I'm a fan of um, stopping, the, stopping the flow, deporting folks who don't belong here or try to come in to do us harm and uh, protect our sovereignty, not only for our physical protection, but for our economy and for our well-being of our children. Um, our schools, that's another topic. Here in, here in Nevada, our schools are 50th in the nation. And a lot of the money spent in schools goes towards illegal immigration. Wow, that's great. Since you discuss about the school, mm -hmm. how about your priority in terms of uh, education in yeah. Nevada? Yeah, so in Nevada, uh, school choice is very important. We, we need to be able to send our children. I'm a father. I have a five-year-old and a one-year-old. And we need to be able to send our children to where they're going to they're gonna thrive and grow and, and do the best they absolutely can and give them the best chance at, you know, the American dream, you know, the reason everybody wants to come here. Um, I believe the school choice is important. I believe that uh, there is a bigger problem in the schools than just funding. Um, a lot of times we go back to just putting money on putting money in schools. I think it's a lot bigger than that, and I think we have to address it um, pretty pretty closely. Okay, how about the sound with regards with the issues of the Second Amendment? What is your stance with that one? Yes. Yeah, so the Second Amendment, you know, is it's very clear in the Constitution. Uh, our rights will not be infringed, and and the intent of of that in the forefathers was for for us for citizens to be able to protect themselves not only from immediate harm, but also from a, a government that grows too big for itself. Um, I believe there's, there's uh, the Second Amendment is very important. We have to be able to maintain enough to protect ourselves. Uh, and, you know, less, less government involvement than that. And, and burdening law-abiding citizens with legislation is, is not okay. Um, you know, we have to address those who do harm in our, in our criminals, uh, and we have to address those uh, as they come. Great. How about your top priorities, if ever you will win in the Congress? So when I, went, when I win and I become a congressman, my first priority is com partnering with the communities that I represent. The constituents of Congressional District 4, and I've talked to lots of them, they want a voice. They want somebody that will talk and, and take their voice to Congress and fight for them and fight for what we need in the district. What, what happens a lot now, congressmen go to Washington and Washington absorbs them. I don't want that to happen. I want to be able to talk, to come talk to people in my district and, and represent them in a way that, you know, is authentic for them and, and be there for them in that regard. You know, and, and I go back to, in our district, we have opportunities on the economic level to bring in jobs. Uh, there are opportunities to get the federal government out of Nevada a little bit and, and, and allow some economic development at the local level. The schools we've talked about a little bit um, and, and just, again, being part of the community. Wow, that's great. So, Sam, you know the, the population of Filipino community in Las Vegas is so high. 
So how will you embrace the Filipino community? Yeah, so that's a great question, and thank you for that. Um, the Filipino community and I um, have a little bit of a kindred uh, spirit, and I have a sister who is half Filipino. Really? Filipina, yes. Um, Stephanie, hello. <laughs> and, um, so I have a little bit of, of, of connection there. Um, but, the but the reality of it is being present. You have to be, if you're going to represent somebody, you have to show up. You have to be there. You have to listen and understand what the needs are and what their desires are. And I think that's missing right now. I think the, the um, again, as I mentioned before, current and, and past uh, congressional leadership have not made the connection as well as they could have. And I think one of my strengths is the ability to do that. Wow. So, yeah. Th that's great. So, I know you're, you're pressed and... Uh, you never ran for an office. Correct. Why are you qualified for Congress? Because I think, as I mentioned before, the, the, um, the Founding Fathers intended for citizen legislators to represent the people, and that's what I am. I'm a citizen. I've been in the military. I have leadership skills. I'm a business owner. I understand business. I'm raising a family. I know what the American spirit and the American dream is all about, and I can make that connection. Having Having, not having served in Congress is not a discriminator to be able to serve in Congress. And unfortunately, I think all too often that's the, uh, the mindset of people. And I aim to break that. And of course, yeah. the top of it, you have also made for yourself. You're a um, businessman. Yeah. You're able to make millions of dollars for a ah. company, <laughs> right? Now, Sam, what's the coverage of the District 4? Yeah, District 4 is the northern third of the Las Vegas Valley, all the way from the, uh, the west, all the way to Sunrise Mountain in the east, and it goes up through White Pine County in Ely uh, on the east side of the state, and then all the way through about half of Lyon County, almost to Carson City on the, on the west side. So it's a really big area. Um, it encompasses all of North Las Vegas, the, the Air Force Base, uh, and just a really big, big space. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Final message to our viewers. Yes, Thank you for having me today. Um, if you are interested in my campaign at all, if you want to reach out to me, sampetersforcongress.com. That's Sam Peters, my name, the number four for District 4, congress.com, sampetersforcongress.com. Thank you so much. Wow, yeah. that's great. Gracias. Thank you very much for coming, <laughs> Thank Sam. Thank you, I appreciate and it. And once again, this talk, Mike, for Film News. Enjoy this week's edition of Film News. Before anything else, I would like to thank my major sponsor, Dr. Godwin Maduka of Las Vegas Pain Institute and Medical Centers, and Pat Magallanes of Pure Medical Equipments and Supply. See you again next week. This is your host, Dr. Michael Santahuana. Mabuhay! <music>